All right, welcome everyone to the Cool Kids Lunch Table Podcast with PJ and Mike. I'm Mike. I'm PJ. And today is our first show. We're going to do some introductions. We're going to get to, uh, uh, get to some getting to know you. We're going to talk about our childhood, some movies, some music, some everyday life. Um, you can find our podcast on uh, coolkidslunchtable.podbean.com. You can listen to us on Spotify, Apple, basically anywhere you listen to podcasts. You know, you can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter, and YouTube, and we'll have that in the uh, show notes. But uh, we have a lot to get to, uh, so find a spot, um, find yourself a spot at our table, and let's eat some lunch. All right. Um, so since this is our first episode, we want to do some introductions and get to know you. We should probably start with where we met, which is way back in the year 1993 in third grade. And, and uh, PJ, I don't know if you and I met over a rabbit. Do you remember which rabbit I'm talking about? Do I remember a rabbit? We met over a rabbit? Yeah. <laughs> I do not remember a rabbit. I'm going to tell you who that rabbit is. I want to know who the rabbit is. Roger Rabbit. Roger Rabbit. I thought you meant like an actual physical rabbit. No, no. And so I'm no. like, did we have like a class pet that I don't remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, right. you and I, I think we kind of bonded over like uh, just, you know, you know, talk about his kids. Like we want to go to Toontown and um, just that magic of just seeing, uh, you know, Eddie Valiant, you know, hanging out with all these other tunes in real life. And that kind of, I think, blossomed our friendship from there. Yeah, I, I think you're right, because we always spend most of our childhood talking about movies, cartoons, characters, comic books. Um, I mean, all you go back to 1993, our biggest conversation was probably Power Rangers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that was a big one. I remember going into the Abbey Lane playground, and we would have to pick a Power Ranger, because we'd play Power Rangers in the... Yeah. And, uh, and it was always like, who's going to be the Green Ranger? Who's going to be Tommy? Because everyone wants to be Tommy Oliver, Green Ranger, White Ranger. And there could only be one. All so right. I remember that was a... A big thing in our in our childhood. Right, right, yeah, yeah. I was I remember, the Red Ranger and Black Ranger were actually my favorite ones, but um, you know, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, those times were just amazing. And dude, like, we graduated high school twenty years ago, man. What is going on, each other? Yeah. So we we start so we started school together. We became friends in nineteen ninety three, ninety four in that area. And then we were friends through all of high school. We're still friends now. We're doing a podcast. Nineteen ninety three. To now is 30 years. This is going on. It took us 30 years to put together a podcast. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. I remember, like, I think in high school, um, for those listening, you know, PJ and I always wanted to have our own, actually, cable access show. And, you know, as kids, we were trying to figure it out. It just wasn't, you know, feasible that at that time. And now you've got, imagine if we had YouTube as kids. Oh, we would have been, been YouTube stars. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. definitely would have been influencers. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so... I think like just like in high school, you kind of you know once you, you know post graduation, you kind of go your separate ways. But uh, you know, I think a meme brought us back together. Yeah. You know, we always had contact, but a meme specifically one day we'll we'll post it. Um, what brought us back? I do have it saved. We'll post it on the Instagram. Okay, okay perfect. The meme that started the Cool Kids Lunch Table podcast. Yeah, and um, and then yeah, we just you know the time the stars aligned, the time is right to bring you know creativity back in our lives and to you know to be. Um, a force once again. So I'm going to give you a pop quiz that you weren't uh, prepared right. for, um, yeah. but I think it I think it'll be relevant for what we're going to talk about a little bit today. Do you know who won in the year 1994 Best Picture at the Oscars? So I think when I, we first became friends, what was the Best Picture that year? I think I'm. Uh, is it Forrest Gump? It is not Forrest Gump. La, 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 what? It is not. La, 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 la. This is with wolves. No. So Damn. based on my internet research, and everyone who listens will probably write in and tell us we're wrong, but 1994, I'm considering that third grade. Right, yeah. And that would be Schindler's List. Ah. Oh. Right, okay. Schindler's List. Now, that was a, that one was a much easier one than your next pop quiz. Right, right. Next pop quiz. Damn. Who won Best Picture when we graduated from high school in 2003? Uh... If you get this one, I'd be shocked because I had no idea. Hold on. I'm not even certain I've seen by, the movie. I'm trying to go by years. It, it ah, is a big name bad. movie, but I, I've never seen it. I've never had any interest in seeing it. Oh, my God. I was going to say... Um... Oh, the English patient? I it is not the English patient. In 2003, Best Picture of the Year was Chicago. Oh, 
I should have gotten that. I never, I, I've never seen it. Because I don't like musicals. Uh, I, it's not even that I don't like musicals. I just never have the interest to see that movie. Right. Neither so, do I. Yeah. yeah. Damn. And then the most current Oscar winner, I think, I fell asleep on the, the show because it was boring. Oh, yeah, yeah, But I think yeah, it was yeah. Everything Everywhere All at Once was this year's. Yes. Yeah. But I, I wanted to ask you if, you if you knew when we were in third grade and when we graduated high school. Right. I was right. just curious if you Damn. would know it. So I, I set up some pop quizzes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, that's going to be what this podcast is mostly about, right? We're going to talk a lot about movies. We're going to talk a lot about TV shows, and pop culture, because it's something we're both into and we always have been. So yeah, this is basically going to be like a one hour, like variety show. We're going to talk about music, film, you know, everyday life. We have special guests and interviews lined up. So, um, there's something for everyone here at our, te- at our lunch table. So, um, you have a lot to look forward to. I think one of the things, you know, I, you know just, can we just talk about high school? Is just like, you think about all the people you went to high school with. Like, where did they go? <laughs> you know, like that kid in your own class, like, you know, you always hung out with each other in, like, gym class, and then he just vanishes. Just like, gone. Like, they don't exist anymore. It's like, back, well, that's what I was saying. Yeah. It's like Doc Brown. It's like, yeah. erased. Erased. Just gone. From existence. You know yeah. what I mean? It's the same. It's amazing how that happens. You know, like, where do they go? And, you, and sometimes you can't even find them on, even though we have social media now. Like, you know, yeah. Facebook all this. But they're just not there. Yeah. They're I mean, just not there. You know what's also funny? I think about things in like high school or elementary school, middle school, all those different things. The, I remember things happening, right? Like yeah. that, but I don't remember who was there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I know, in in Abbey Lane, we were there. I know I threw up on a kid because I had to eat carrots. <laughs> they they were doing. We did like a party, like a class snack or whatever, right? Right, right. And the snacks, and I don't think it was a class you were in. Because if I threw up on someone, you were there, you would remember. Oh, yeah. And uh, But we were there, and they, they had, like, community snacks. And one of them was carrot sticks. Right. And I don't like carrot sticks. I didn't want to eat carrot sticks. But they forced me into eating the carrot sticks. Right. And I threw up on a kid. I don't know who that kid is. I'll never remember. But it's the little things that I remember about school. Me throwing up on somebody because they made me eat carrots. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. yeah. I'm trying to think if I ever threw up in school. Um... No, I think it's like almost like a, I think I, I think I'm pretty sure I peed my pants at school. I think it's like a rite of pants. I think everyone either throws up, shits of pants, or something at school. At school, you have to, yeah, because it's it's eight hours of of just misery when you're in school and you're a kid, and sometimes you just want to pee just to get out of class. Mm-hmm. Yo, going back to the Oscars, you know, what did you think of it since like you know post Will Smith? <sighs> I think Will Smith slapping Chris Rock was the best thing to happen to the Oscars because it made it worth watching. <laughs> um, did you watch this year's? Uh, yes and no. Like, I, I checked in and out. You know? I think it's the most boring TV show. It's just... And it's just like all of these people on the Oscars have millions and billions of dollars, right? There's not a single person there that's like hurting or struggling. None of them are struggling. But they, have, they give themselves a six-hour TV show to just tell themselves how great they are. I think it's a little pretentious. I'm not a fan of the Oscars. I, I used to be when I was younger because, you know, I love movies. I think the problem with it is now it takes itself way too seriously. It really does. It's way too political. Because, look, back, look, this all these award shows, the Grammys, whatever, American Music Awards, it's all about, pr- look. Uh, it's yes, self-promotion. Yeah, it's about, you know, you want to promote your product, and it's also an acknowledgement, of course. But at the end of the day, it's, you know, it's you want to promote your product. Oh, and this actor, and you want to push it up. And all these things, you know, Paramount Studios. Yeah. yeah. And all those, you see the thing in the, the opening logo during the movie yeah. it has all those stars. Yeah. That term of uh, "we'll make you a star" that was a big thing back in the day. That was an actual thing because the studio would own an actor. Basically, right. you would sign a contract, and you would so only make movies for that. Used to be like, yeah. "Hey, Sonny, I'll make you a star." That means like you would actually be one of the stars <laughs> on the, uh, you know, of right, the, right. Uh, you know, that crest that goes over the mountain. I didn't know that. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think just now, like anyway. The Oscars are supposed to be, you know, kind of goofing on each other. I just you know, that's don't why think you had the opening yeah. roast with. Whoever. I don't think it's fun anymore to watch it, and I, I don't think the the hosts are great. I, I don't think Ricky Ricky Gervais. I don't know if he did the Oscars or the Golden Globes. I think, did, yeah, I think, yeah, yeah, he did the Golden. Globes. I think Globes, he did yeah. the Golden Globe. To me, he was a great host. He made fun of everybody. No, nothing was off limits, and he did what he wanted to do. Mm-hmm. If you watch the Oscars last week, two weeks, whenever it was. And it was uh, Jimmy Kimmel hosting. Yeah. You could tell that he was going out of his way to not offend anybody. And I'm not saying you should go around trying to offend people, but if you're trying to be funny as a host of the Oscars, he's a comedian. If you're trying that hard to water down your act so nobody's offended, it becomes not fun to watch. It it just you could tell it was forced. It was totally pr- like way too scripted. None of it felt mm-hmm. natural, and it just wasn't even fun to watch. The 
the people presenting the awards, there were no banter between them. It was just, I don't know. I, I, I find it hard to watch and I want to watch it and because I like movies and stuff like that. But it's just, I don't know. I, I can't sit through it. And also, I have a real problem when the movies that are winning awards, nobody has seen. Yeah. No, there's definitely an elitism in that. And, I mean, I, I think, look, this they've been having this show for, what, 75 years now? I think it's 95 years, Jesus something like that. Christ, I think this, so. this might have been the 96th or something like that. The best part was Short Round winning his award. Short Round was oh, great. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he deserved yeah. that win. I didn't see the movie, but he's just a very likable guy. Um, but I don't know. I didn't. I didn't enjoy it. I find it pretentious. I find it takes itself too seriously, and I just not very entertaining. It's the not music, fun anymore. The, no, it's not fun. The musical acts <laughs> I didn't care about. Mm-hmm. I didn't give it. I just didn't care. I, I mm-hmm. tried to to care. I just couldn't. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of it too is like you don't have these like these. I'll say characters like you don't have Jack Nicholson anymore. I mean, he's still alive. You know, but like you don't have like those kind of huge stars. You don't see Pacino. I don't think he was there. I don't know. But like you don't have all these classic. I mean, you have Jamie Lee Curtis. Well, well there's there. no more movie stars. Movie stars don't right. exist anymore. Exactly. So I'm saying that, that yeah, kind of kills the, uh... the. I mean, you have like someone like Tom Cruise who didn't show up to the Oscars, but he's a movie star. Mm-hmm. You know, he he has a presence when he walks onto that stage or you see him in a movie. Yes. But then there are some people and they they just have no presence, no charisma. They're nothing. They're nothing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that's a big part of why the Oscars aren't as entertaining as they used to be because there are still good movies out there, but outside of the people in the movie, when they're acting in the movie, when you take them out of that setting and put them into real life, they're like wet blankets. There's nothing to them. Yeah. Well, I think social media also kills that, you know, yeah. because there was a mystique around them. Now you, you know, you know what they're, they're just, they're too know. approachable almost. It's just yeah. like another person. Yeah. They're not larger than life anymore. Mm-hmm. Well, there is one person that's larger than life, but you hate him. Wait a minute. Who? Backstreet Boys? Like, the Rock. <laughs> oh, the Rock. Ah. Oh, yeah, He was yeah. there in Larger Than Life when he oh, shows up God. on stage. And I know you don't like The Rock, but his charisma. He was a presenter with... Uh, Emily Blunt or something? Emily, like yes, Emily Blunt. And they were all right. I mean, they weren't the most entertaining. But the minute he walks on stage, he commands the stage. Well, I'll give you that. Yeah, no, yeah, I don't, I don't the, the guy, yeah. I just find his movies basically unwatchable. You know, uh, I don't know if they're unwatchable. He's not winning, he's not winning an, Os- an Oscar for any of his movies. He's not winning... But he he's fun to watch. I think he... He brings a lot of energy. He brings a no, lot of yeah, energy. No, yeah, no, no. He has definitely charisma. Um, He's the most electrifying man in sports entertainment. So <laughs> uh, you can't say he's not charismatic. And, mm-hmm. But but yeah, his movies are not. They're not deep. There's no. There's no. no which is uh, fine. They don't, they don't need to be deep. No, but I just find him the same guy in, in you know, everything. He's it's, always. It's just, he's. He hops. really needs to save his career. Um, I don't want to say save his career, but to really make him. Bigger, you know, or really solidify him as a, a, I'll say, as a movie star. He needs to be a villain in a movie. Well, they made him a villain, but then they made the villain a hero anyway. Ah, uh, Black Adam doesn't count. Did you see Black Adam? Nah, I know, they look horrendous. I watched Black Adam. <laughs> I saw it in the theater, and I saw it at home, because I bought it when it came out. And I loved it. I really did. Um, <laughs> the only one who did. I'm the only <laughs> one. That movie made about $12, because I went to see it. Um, that was what that movie made. I thought it was a fun movie. The The plot wasn't the deepest, but it's a superhero movie, so I'm not looking for a Schindler's List. Yeah. Uh, I'm not looking for that. It was action-packed. He looked the part. The story was enough for me to, to like, I'll watch this again. I'll watch a sequel. This, this is not going to happen because DC's not making any more movies um, right. with the, in the old universe. They're rebooting the whole thing. I thought Black Adam, It's it was pretty true to the comic book, too, from like where he, you know where he came from. How he was a villain who turned into a hero, and I thought The Rock did a good job. Zero depth to the character. Right, I, none. That movie, like I said, that movie is, is a popcorn movie. But I still feel like I mean, nothing was gonna save that movie. Not The Rock, nobody, you know. But I think he just he's very one dimensional, and you know, he's he he plays Hobbs. He's Hobbs, right, in the Fast and the Furious movies. Yeah, I've never seen Hobbs. him in those movies. Uh, he plays know? the same character in that the movie same, in like, every voice movie. And everything. Nothing changes. It's the same. Did you see the new Jumanji movies? Jumanji? Uh, no, I saw just the first one. First one's fine. It's, but I think yeah. you can replace him with any actor. You can. He's, you know, he, he's not making that film. Those, you know? the movie I think Kevin Hart good. can't replace That's exactly Jack what I was going to say. I think you know, Kevin Hart with The Rock mm-hmm. is a good combination. Or even combination. that girl. I think she's um, in the Guardians of the Galaxy, whatever it is. Yes, the you know, girl. The, the blue girl. I, uh, now I can't think of her name. She's got some yeah. good physical comedy in that, too. Yeah. You know? But The Rock, I mean, I think you could have replaced him with any other. You know, Jason with, Statham or, uh, you know, to be the... The muscle right. of the film, you know? The Rock just has a big look about him, a lot of charisma. 
And when he walked on the stage on the Oscars in his pink jacket, um, you know, you couldn't help but look at him. He, he has the presence that those movie stars used to have. He just doesn't have the movies and mm-hmm. the maybe the technical acting ability that some of those people yeah, have. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. he has the presence and the charisma of, a, of an old school movie star. Well, I think it's funny because you, you mentioned Tom Cruise and I was on YouTube and I was looking up, looking up, you know, the Oscar winners again, seeing their speeches. And I saw um, a speech. Oh, well, yeah, I guess they'll say a speech. I guess opening monologue was actually for, it was the first Oscars after September 11th. And it was really moving. I recommend everyone uh, to go check that out. Um, it's so good. So um, he starts with, I actually have the quote here. Uh, Billy Wilder uh, once said this. Uh, that's a director who made like okay. some like it hot, seven year itch. And he says, you know, what makes a movie unforgettable? A little bit of magic. And like, anyway, after that, Tom Cruise, this whole thing about what inspired him was really beautiful. Um, so I think going with that, I think movies are definitely, definitely missing a lot of magic these days. And did you see... Uh, the uh, Little Mermaid trailer? I, I did. I did see the Little Mermaid trailer. So here's the thing. All of these live action Disney remakes that they're making, and this and this will feel this will have the same problem as all the other ones. They're unnecessary. And they don't capture the classic movies, the spirit of those classic movies. It it looks like all right, so I'm watching the Little Mermaid trailer. And Little Mermaid swims onto the screen or whatever. It doesn't look real. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't look real. When you watch the original Little Mermaid cartoon, obviously it's a cartoon. It's not real. And it's fine. You've accepted that. But you tell me you're making a live-action remake. It just looks like a fancier cartoon with less skilled people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I couldn't name a single actress or actor from the original Little Mermaid right yeah. now. If you like, who voiced her? I couldn't tell you. I have no idea. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But her voice... Is like an iconic voice. The minute you hear her sing, oh, yeah, you yeah. know, under, uh, you know, when you part hear of this part world. of this world, yeah, when you yeah, hear yeah. part of this world, or when you hear the guy who plays Sebastian do Under the Sea, these are like iconic voices, and it's just like you listen to it and you're taken somewhere different. I watched that trailer; it seems so empty. I think the problem. I, I totally 100 percent agree. It's 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 just like there's a voidness to it. I think first of all, all these live action. They're not even live action. It's. It's just CG. It's 99% yeah. CG. It's like so it's a, animation again. It's just computer animation. It's just animation. computer animation. Live action Lion King, not a real lion to be found. Like, right. Why is it? Why are we calling this live action? I think the problem um, with the Little Mermaid trailer is, number one, it's, it's like, look, besides Avatar 2, it's very difficult to film underwater. That's, yeah. That doesn't help it. That's number one. And, and honestly, it just looks boring. You know, it just... Looks well, you've like already seen it. Yeah, <laughs> it's just dark. Everything has that that gray. You know, you, you ever see the Beauty and the Beast one with the uh, with, name? with Hermione? Yes. yes. What's yeah. her name? Emma Watson. Right? Emma, uh, Emma Watson. Yeah. That movie was boring, man. Ugh. I I don't care. There's no the songs are great. Everyone knows that. Those they songs added new songs. Uh, and I'm like, I don't care about the new song. The songs are great when they do the singing and and you have Obi Wan as as uh, Lumiere. It was great. Oh, yeah, right, right. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah, like, the act, the, the cast was great, and the performances were great. I just, they're all missing something. If they don't have the, they don't have the magic behind it the way the original cartoons do. And and it makes the movie yeah. suffer, because these are children's movies that are being aimed at the adults who saw them when they're kids. That's what these movies are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because if you're a kid now... You probably don't give a shit about The Little Mermaid. There's no right. reason to. Right. Right? And I mean, unless you're a big Disney person, you go to Disney on vacation every year, you have no reason to have any connection to Beauty and the Beast, The Little Mermaid, The Lion King. Yeah. The, so these movies are being made for adults, and they're not adult movies. And right. so it, it doesn't feel the same, and there's no nostalgia because they're brand new. I can still watch the original cartoons. And have all the nostalgia. I can't watch the new ones and feel like it, it's the same. Yeah. Uh, I just don't have any interest in them. Uh, the Lion King. I, I didn't see it. I, I th- it was from a technical like. Oh, yeah. yeah it's yeah, great. Yeah. It looks fantastic. They look like real lions. But who? It, it's they're not. And the story doesn't change. I don't know. It, the, for me. The best live, a- uh, live action was The Jungle Book. I was about to say that. that the was, Jungle Book was that good. That was awesome. I yeah. think it helps it was because the original look, the original movie is not that good. It's not. Uh, the cartoon is, it's okay. It's it's, it's, it's a product great. of its time for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's okay. It's, the songs are great, you know, yeah. uh, you know, whatever. 
Loop and Louie, whatever, whatever songs they're singing. But King Louie? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those, those, those songs, but that movie was awesome. And I think, that obviously, they, you know, Hollywood yeah. or anything that's successful, they're going to copy and paste it. But um, And that was also, I believe, helmed by, uh, I think it was Favreau. Yep, he did that in I The think, Lion King. Yeah, too. and The Lion King looks as good as The Jungle Book does, but The Jungle Book was, uh, was a much better movie. Mm-hmm. And that kid who had to act against, like, nobody. God bless him, yeah. Yeah, did a really good job. I think, I agree. I think The Jungle Book is probably the best live action. And I think the second best one that you can probably watch more than once, but probably not more than three times, is is uh, is Aladdin. I never saw it. It looked too cheesy for me. It is. And I think, didn't Guy Ritchie direct that? I think that was a Guy Ritchie movie. And the guy who oh, plays... Oh, that's a, a good... Anyway. The guy who does... I like him. I don't like... I think he's yeah. a good... Pick for the yeah to direct that. I did not love Will Smith as uh, as the genie. Oh my god! Which oh. is the biggest problem <laughs> with that movie is you could recast everybody and no one will care, but the genie is Robin Williams and is a big and and he did his best. He did his best to be the genie. I just didn't love it. I just didn't love it. Um, but you can watch that movie more than once. It it is better than some of the other live action remakes. There is more action. There's more comedy. It's it's a brighter movie and there's more. No, it's more colorful. I'll give it that. And there's more colorful. practical uh, effects and and more actual scenery there. It's not all CG. Mm-hmm. You know, the other movies have so much fake stuff in it that, like you said, it's like watching a cartoon because the Beast isn't real in Beauty and the Beast. The, the lions aren't real. The you know Baloo isn't real. So you're really just watching more cartoons. That one actually mm-hmm. had real stuff in it, yeah, yeah, yeah. which makes it easier to well, watch. Well, I think, the, I, look, I'm not against CGI. I, I have no problem with that. I think, for sure, I think to bring some magic back, I think they need to bring back practical effects like a puppet. I think they should have, with the Beauty and the Beast thing of now, I I think they should have had, like, you ever see that movie? I think it came out in the 80s. Return to Oz, remember that? Yeah. It's like a weird, you yeah. know. You know like a was, weird Wizard of Oz sequel? Yeah, 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 yeah. That nobody asked for? Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I think, wouldn't have been good if they had, like, a, you know, like a, a candlestick and they use puppeteering. You it know, of course you use CGI for certain things. Yeah, doy. Right. But, I mean, I think they could, that could have really helped because you see them interact. Everything looks so just... It looks fake. fake. It's like... Just because boring. When, and because when Hermione is acting with, yeah. with, uh, yeah. with the candlestick, mm-hmm. she's not looking at anything. It's like, it doesn't... Right. It feels empty. It feels empty. Because if you, you've seen uh, Harry Potter films? You've yeah. Seen them? Uh, I don't think Dobby. I think Dobby's all CGI. He's all but, CGI. Uh, I think, but they have the other, uh, the goblins, you know, some of them are puppets. Yeah. It makes a total difference, you know? The uh, problem, I think, with the puppets is that there's not enough people anymore now who can build and operate those puppets in quite a way where it looks believable. Um, and you look at Star Wars, right? You go all the way back to Star Wars and you look at, like, Yoda and all the Yoda was there in the, right, in the right, movie. Right. He's a puppet. And they built the stage, the set higher. Right. And then they went underneath so that... Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think the technical know-how for the puppetry is there anymore because so many people now rely on the CGI that you don't have the same caliber of people. No, this is dizzy. They make they make all their theme parks with animatronics. They can't, you know. I just think that's the a, Caribbean. You can't get some guy, you know. Can't, I know. Get, they, don't they own the, the Muppets? Don't they own them? They too? do own the Muppets, and they the Muppets are still the best thing Disney yeah, has. But that's <laughs> you don't have like the Jim Henson crew or I, Stan Winston that whole company. I don't or, know that the Jim Henson uh, people. I don't know if they're owned by Disney, but you would think they could pay them. Yeah. They own the Muppets. I don't know if they own Jim Henson Productions. I think Jim Henson is still... Because they also do um, Sesame Street, and that's not owned by Disney. Mm -hmm. And I think there's some other stuff that Henson does, uh, that production company does. But you would still think they would be able to afford to pay someone to do it. But I really think it's a skill that's being lost. You don't see a lot of stop motion animation anymore either. Yeah. It's all CGI. I don't think it's like always good. Certain things are just gonna, you know, fade out of style. I get that, but I don't know, man. I think certain, like the classics, just don't die. You know what I mean? I think it's still certain things. Like, look, people still love kids. Still love Sesame Street. I mean, there's there's still magic in that. There, there should. Know? I mean, the the puppetry, I think, is great. I would love to see more of it. And they did it in Star Wars when they tried to replace Yoda with a CGI Yoda, and everyone like revolted. Like, no, 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 no. Yeah. My Yoda is a puppet. Um, and even if you watch like the Mandalorian. Oh yeah, a little, uh, baby maybe Yoda. He's a puppet. He's a yeah. puppet. He's he's it really makes all the difference though. It does. Yeah. It looks real. He's hey, an like interactive selling toy right now. Yeah. You know. So yeah, there is a place for it. I just don't think there's enough people doing it mm-hmm. to make a whole movie where it would be believable. Right. And I guess you have a budget of 
whatever billions of dollars they're plugging into these movies, they want it to look and feel the best it can. And I guess they... I get why they use the CGI, but I'm with you. I'd rather see more practical effects. Yeah. More yeah. puppetry. I mean, those dinosaurs are really there in Jurassic Park. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah those yeah. dinosaurs yeah, are there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they're really there in Jurassic World. Right, right, right. But in, no, right, right. But in Jurassic mm-hmm. Park, when... You know, when they see the, the yeah, dinosaur. When, yeah, when Newman gets, uh, you know, yeah. the shaving cream and it spits at him. Yeah, that's real, happening. It's, yeah, it's you know, real. that's... It makes all a huge difference. Um, speaking of running out of magic, I think I think Disney World's running out of magic, bro. Uh, all the magic <laughs> is still there for me. I don't think so, man. I think so. I, uh, you know, the for me, let me just say this. Here's my rant with Disney and their parks. I just find them becoming, besides becoming way too expensive you know look i understand when you go on vacation you're gonna spend money I, i'm content with that i get that but everything i think everything is a fee you know I mean, you already pay a park you already pay to enter the park now you're gonna pay to you know cut the line like it's just i know i know universal has their fast pass but disney started the fast pass first and it was free originally it, it was, was free it was free and now it's this thing it's an extra thing it's an extra it, the, so they cost. have the lightning you don't lanes. Need, you don't need to do that. It, so I've used the lightning lane. I've been I've been to Disney. Is that the same thing as Genie Plus? Well, so no. Um, yes and no. So there's Genie Plus, which you have to pay for. Right. And then with Genie Plus, once you pay for it and you add it to your ticket, you can get lightning lanes for certain rides. You can wow. only have like two or three at a time, I think, or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I, for, I forget the actual specifics, but that's how it works. But then in addition to that... They have individual lightning lanes. So you can pay for certain rides to cut the line. Mm. So like if you want to go on Star Wars Rise of the Resistance, that's that you need Genie Plus, but you know, for your normal stuff, you still have wow. to pay separate for that ride. So it's more money. All right. Um, and I've done that because I want to go on the rides, right? I don't, there's, <laughs> there's two ways of looking at oh, it. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. I paid all this money. I would like to get on a ride. There's two ways of looking at it. One, it's an extra fee. But two, not everyone is paying for the extra fee. So if you do, it works out to your favor. When the when the fast pass was free, the problem was it stopped being a fast pass. Because then everybody was doing it, so there was always a line. With now with the, with people paying, not everyone wants to pay, so now when you do pay for it, the lines are shorter. I think there's other where they could I think the problem with the, with the when Fast Pass was free was you had to come back a certain time. Yeah, they never really honored with that. You could come back later. Whatever in the day. you wanted. Yeah, that's if you what, missed it, they'd still let you go. Exactly. I think because they don't want to say no to people. Yeah, exactly. The, that's, so, but I, that's the whole still, thing. But I, you know, I mean, now I think they with Bob Iger is back. You know, cause, yeah, because they had you paying if you stayed at their hotel, you had to pay just to park in the yeah. hotel. They were they they have since you know. Um, Remove that, thank God. But that's just, you know, I don't know. It's just the whole thing about, you know, you got to wake up 7 a.m. on your phone to, you know, reserve your that spot was on, a, on, a, on, a, on a ride. Like, yeah. what are we doing here? Look, this is my problem with Disney. It's, it's fun, but it's not stress-free. I'm stressed out the whole time. The whole time. time. It's a stressful vacation. I don't vacation. see anybody. I see people walking around with their kids. Everyone's yelling at each other. Like, we got we to gotta make it to Thunder it, Mountain Railroad. You know what I mean? Everyone's... Everyone is like, I think everyone wants, I think everyone, everyone's having a nice time, you know? But I think everyone is stressed out. It's hot, you know what I mean? Just to get to the Magic Kingdom, yeah. you know, you got to take a boat or a monorail. <laughs> I mean, my God, I just want to get to the place. You got to actually be... drive to the park and park in front of the park. To go to Magic Kingdom, you got to drive to the, like a ticketing location, park there, hop on a monorail to get to the park, and then there's like it's a, too mo- much, a two man. mile it's long too walk much. to get to the park. I know uh, they're not going to drain the whole lake, you know what I mean? It, but, but I like the boat ride. It's fun. Eh, it's part of the experience. No, no, the, no, I not, like the boat it's ride. It's not magical anymore. It okay? is. <laughs> it not. is. It's totally magical. No. If you stay no. in the Grand Floridian... They want to, I'll pay extra to cut that. Yeah. Get right if you stay in the boat, Grand Floridian, you, ride your, way, you ride your boat across the, uh, the the moat, whatever it is, you know. You go through. It's just part of the experience. I go to Disney yeah. probably once or twice a year, every year. Um, I love it. Okay. Uh, 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 and I'm just saying for the average yeah, person. for the average they might, person. They might go maybe once a year, maybe yeah. every other, because it's right. expensive. It's expensive. Like, and, the know. more you go, though, the less stressful it becomes, because You've now seen everything. I've seen it. If I don't right. get to go on Pirates, I don't care. I've done it so many times. Right. I can focus on the newer stuff. It does become right. a different experience for someone who goes sure. regularly than someone sure. who goes 
with their family once every four or five years. Yeah, that they you've got kids, man. Forget about yeah. it. Yeah. They're, they have the new Star Wars themed hotel that I did, the the Galactic Star Cruiser. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Stupid expensive. Yeah, it's like about we pay close to three, four thousand. Right? It was more. Oh my god. For the two, with two people, and it cost us close to six thousand. What? For a, for two days, and it was the best money I've ever spent in my entire life. I want to do it again. I thought it was the whole experience is great from beginning to end. I felt like I right, lived right, Star Wars. Right. You don't feel like you're in Florida. You don't feel like you're in Disney. They set it up. The whole time, everyone's dressed up like they belong in, in, in Star Wars, so you're in, like, cosplay the whole time. Right. And you're the experience is out of this world, but it's not for everyone because not everyone can afford it. But if you want to yeah. talk about magic, if you go on that trip, there's nothing but magic. I, I, I haven't gone on it. I guess my, my question is, it's just like, I try to, because, look, I look back to the future, you know, if they had, like, a, you know, I could go to... Marty's house or the right. school and they had like some kind of hotel with all these different you know 2015 and on or whatever you know like I'm an adult is this really geared towards kids you know what I mean like oh, I'm gonna die hard I'm like if, what am I gonna do I'm gonna play if, laser tag with stormtroopers like, yeah there's no laser adult. tag you know, um, I can't there's no laser to, tag going on you know, this I is I would say themed you know? more for adults than kids uh, because I well, say the hotel's yeah. not doing that well. It's no, not it's doing not. Well. First they, of all, you can't be charging those kind of prices. Well, that's what it is. The hotel, if man. you charge less they money, they should have just made it a luxury hotel. It just it wouldn't be the same know. experience. I'm telling you, having lived through it, I would say it's it's less for kids because there's a lot of. I don't. That's the whole thing. Well, it used to be, but it's Star Wars. <laughs> it's, kids, it's it's for me. It's made for me. I don't LARP. Do you ever LARP live action role play? Probably no, not. No, no, never. Neither do I. I have no. I, I've never known about it. But it, it, you know, it's like when people go to like Renaissance fairs and they live through the Renaissance. Yeah, yeah, no, I get, no, I get that. I'm like, so, I'm saying that's fun. It's, yeah, you know. So with this, do they you, sell alcohol at the Star Wars? Hotel? They do. Okay, go say I can, I can only ten of Darth Vader from. There's plenty. <laughs> you know, if I maybe have, uh, have a couple of drinks to me, I don't know if I can just but walk the way, around. So they like set that. it up, right? Mm -hmm. You you can't actually see the hotel from where you are, the outside of it. You can never see it. Right, right, right. They set it up so that the first thing you do when you get there is you go into what looks like a rocket ship. It's an elevator, right. but it looks like an escape pod or whatever from like a, the, mm -hmm. one of the from the ships. Mm -hmm. And it's there's no windows. There's just super high def screens that look like, like the you're in space like so, so when you're going up, it looks like you're flying oh, okay, in space. Okay. And then the elevator, which is a spaceship, gets to where it is. The door opens. You walk onto the ship. Right. You feel like you're in a – there's big, giant screens everywhere. So you look outside. You're seeing space. And they're super high def. It looks real. Right. So the whole time you think you're in space. Um, now, there are there kids? Yeah, sure, because it's Disney. Well, yeah. There's gonna well, be. That's, you know. The kids have their own activities they set up for them. The adults go off and kind of do their own thing. They give you missions to do. But I'm on vacation, bro. I don't need time to be doing missions, man. Well, the galaxy gotta, is getting... I gotta get on Space Mountain. <laughs> yeah, I get on Space Mountain. I got time. I got time to this, be, when you do you the know, Star Wars trip, there is no Space Mountain. You're only in Star Wars. We added days on additional so we could still do Disney stuff. If you're stuff. paying that much, they should give you a park hopper. A park hopper for those... You wouldn't have time. You, you can go to... You wouldn't have time. But still, that should be included with it, man. And, but included where? You could... You, this thing is gives you an itinerary that you're gonna follow. Yeah, I don't they give want it to no you. I'm on vacation. No, oh, no, you're missing you out. I get away from schedules, man. You know. This is the best kind of schedule. Like they'll tell you at like three o'clock, go to the lightsaber training room. You're gonna learn how to use a lightsaber. So all that's, it's put it this way. You know, here's what it's like. It's not a hotel. It's a cruise. It's a cruise. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, you, that that okay. So look, if you're a person to cruises, yes. you might be more. Yes, into it. it's a cruise. But, it's set up exactly like a cruise would be set up. The Star, Cru the Galactic Star Cruiser, is a oh, cruise in space. Name, yeah. It's a cruise in space, so it gives you the itinerary. So you know when you go on a cruise, there's a, uh, an excursion, and you right, wind right, up right, in right. like the Bahamas or the beach, right? Or something, right? right? Mm -hmm. But here, right, it's not that. Your excursion is a planet, right, and right. it's it's. In in Hollywood Studios, it's it's uh, Batu is the name of the planet that you land on. Yeah, it's the Star yeah, Wars yeah. land, mm -hmm. Galaxy's Edge. So you don't go in the front of the park. Mm -hmm. There's a separate entrance you can only get to from the hotel. So it makes it feel like you're landing on this planet. Right, right, right. Like the, mm -hmm. there's you know how you go to Disney, there's a bus like you said, a boat with all this other. Yeah. They have a separate transportation system mm -hmm. that looks like you're walking into a like an escape pod yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So it feels like you're flying down to this planet. You land at a, a dock, like just like you would in the movies. You walk right. out. So you walk right into Star Wars. You don't see the rest of Disney. And the park is built so that you can't see what's outside right, of it. Right, 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 right. So you're really, for these two days, you're really confined to just Star Wars. 
Um, and so if you're into Star Wars and you love it, you feel like right. you're in, in the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's great. It's the best experience I've had in Disney my entire life. I've been I mean, to Disney like, more I times than I can I can't, count. I have been. I can't. Not, it's, it's definitely it's, not for me. Like I said, I could be you know, Back to yeah. the Future or Roger Rabbit, uh, Roger, Roger Rabbit Land or I mean, Toontown. I would do know, all like, of those in an immersive uh, experience if they did them. Uh, but star, I'm telling you, man, this Star Wars thing but, is the best thing I've ever done. But here's the thing that, with Disney, you know... It's, you know, because I love Universal, but with Disney, I just feel like everything is like I just I like I, I feel like once like once I'm done with that trip, I feel like I need a vacation from that vacation. There's so much to it do. It burns me out. It, it I feel is... like like I can't be get up in the morning seven a.m. so I could you know land my spot you know you know for you know Splash Mountain or something like that. And like I don't know. So let me. While I'm on vacation, bro, this is what I want. Doesn't matter where I am. I want to be. Um, I don't want any stress. Okay, Disney doesn't do Disney's that. Disney's out. Okay, <laughs> Disney's out. Um, I want to be left alone. Disney, they'll bother you. I, I know that sounds. Nice. I know they're trying to be friendly, but I don't want. To, like, I never had it. But I, people who have a button that says like, "Oh, happy birthday, Hannah," it's like, man, leave me alone. I, I gotta get the space mountain. I don't. I don't You're missing out. Slow me down. I don't I, want to say hi to anybody. You gotta wear the button. Leave me alone. They give you free. With the button, what do they get? What do they give you? If I'm wearing my button, well, and I don't want no Kermit, you know, some no. coin they if press. If I'm wearing you know, my happy my birthday head. button, and I go up and I'm like, I'm about to buy a twelve dollar soda, right? right? But I'm wearing my happy birthday button. They're like, hey, happy birthday, soda's on us. You don't got to pay for your twelve dollar soda. What? Yeah. I don't believe that. So they, they do it. They give you, got you something happy, for free. They give you free drinks oh, and snacks man. and stuff all the time because you got your button well, on, maybe man. I'll, all right, maybe we'll try. Yeah, if you I, would, still, but I don't, I don't. This whole thing about you have to have an itinerary. You got to go. And another thing, yeah, another thing I want to, when I'm on vacation, I don't want anyone to bother me. I want to be left alone. <laughs> I don't want to talk to me. I don't want to be in my cell phone. This idea that I have to, you know, log into a ride. I, I, if you want to use it to buy food, all right, fine. But I, I, it's then too much with the you're phone, You're missing man. out. I don't want to be on what the phone, What they put man. on the phone for these parks now. Yeah, uh, but you can see the wait time. Oh, no. Like no, but even more than that. that. There are games, interactive games within the park. So as you're walking around the park and you're rushing to like yeah I don't, I don't have time to, I, I need to get I need to get on the rush, down, you gotta take a step back I go on the rides man the ride is gonna be there the no park's one, open all no night no one's going no one wants to, I don't want to be on their cell phone man I want to be on my cell phone I, I want to do I, all the I, games. Can, I can't do it they, I can't do it there's I can't do it. there are so many intricacies to the apps now that they have for the Disney parks where you're playing games while going through the park so like when you're waiting on a long line. And you're like, I hate this line. You're just staring at a wall. But now there are games built into the queues and stuff in the lines. I it, mean, that part, but like, I'm not yeah, going to like so the much. thing where you wait your kid, like, I don't know. I don't you gotta have go a kid. Right. I'm going to worry about that. <laughs> well, I'm talking about the families. I'm just I'm saying. I'm not worried about those families. <laughs> we can't be selfish, man. Yes, you we can. Talk. Disney's for me. Uh, I, I am a childless millennial. And I go to Disney and I enjoy it. And I get so mad when I see kids there. And I, <laughs> oh, my God. I do. I know. So here's the thing. It's not. I'm not mad that there are kids in Disney. I am mad that there are parents not watching their kids in Disney. I, I feel like have some control over your kid, I and think, then everyone's I think, experience I think, is going to well, be I think better. The problem is it's too overwhelming. Because you have to really, if you really want to, if you're a family who goes there every couple of years to Disney. No, honestly, right. if you really, you have a family of four. Okay. You can't be going there every year. No, and you can't. When can. you do, get, you you got to wake. That's what I'm saying. You got to get everything in. You got to get everything in. You got to get not only everything. You got to get up. The ass crack of dawn. Like yep. I said, because look, you get to, first you gotta go wait in the line to pay for parking, right? That's fifty bucks, whatever it is, right? Twenty five, thirty, whatever it is, right? Then you gotta then you gotta go on a tram, you know? Then after that, let's say you just go to Magic Kingdom, right? Then you gotta either go on a boat. <laughs> you didn't even get to the park yet. You gotta go, you gotta go through the But you know. the boat's part of the fun. No, it's a boat. No, it's, it's a ride. It's hundred degrees out, man. It's but you're on a boat, it's there's, not that hot on the boat. You're sweating. There's a there's you're sweating. Wind. You're there's wind. There. Then you go in there, then you're walking around, then you go in, and then it's Main Street USA. And I was like, Ugh. it's like I don't have time to be looking at the street band or anything. No, I gotta get to, I gotta get, no, I gotta get to gotta, Paris, the Caribbean, man. I gotta, I gotta, gotta get on that line. You gotta go slower and appreciate the can't. park for you what can't. it is. They don't want you to appreciate the park. I appreciate they don't. the park every time I'm there. They don't want you. Tell them. I just go, want you to. I go well, I understand through. We're in the business of making money. Every I'm one of those stores you. on Main Street USA, I go through every one of those stores before I even hit the park. I'm in every store buying stuff. Oh my! Sending God. it back to my room in the hotel. You don't even have to carry what you buy through the parks anymore. You just tell them. Well, send so you're it back to on the property, right? They're not gonna be sending. I've, the I always stay on property. I'm not not staying on property. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I've stayed on property yeah, before. Yeah. It's, it's great. No, that's I say. There's perks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's perks. Nice. 
If you stay off property, then you lose some of the perks, and that makes it even more stressful. They've designed this world. Oh, Disney, yeah. No, okay. That if you, if you pay them all the money and you do everything on their property and let them right. manage everything of your trip, it could become less stressful. But it is a lot of just like, how much can you go with the flow and how much do you want to like have plans? Like I said, even if, I don't know, I just find the place just, you know, like comparing it to Universal, I don't know what it is, maybe because I just love Universal and their movies, but it just feels like, how you go there, everything just seems like, there's not like a, there's like a sense of like, just like hysteria in Disney, like, oh, 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 you know, everyone's like, nah, 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 you know, like, <laughs> It's like a big promotion, yeah. you know? I, and I feel like Universal, you go there, and you go past the big globe, you know, you see Dracula walking around, maybe, you know, uh, Lucille Ball. It just seems just relaxed, you know? And I, I know have, they kind of, I know now they're kind of gearing more towards little kids, yeah. but it's not even about that. I just feel like everything with Universal just seems like, just, there's not this sense of like, I don't know, insanity, you know? Like Disney, it's just like, if I just got sh- I have, like, I have put bigger your issues. Paint on, you know? I have bigger issues with Universal than I do with Disney. Um, I I probably will not go back to Universal. Oh my ever. OMG. I'm probably done with Universal. <laughs> what? I don't I can't see a I cannot see an experience that will bring me back to Universal um, after the last experience that I had in Universal. Now Which one? Uh, California or uh... I've been to both. The last one I went to was Florida, but I've been to both. So first of all, first of all. I go online to buy my tickets mm-hmm. to the park, I think. Right. I spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars to go to this park. And I assumed my, my $600 bill was admission into the park. Right. So I'm like, okay, have my tickets, go to the park day. I go up to the, to the, uh, the gate, about to start my day. I show them my ticket. They're like, you didn't buy tickets. I'm like, I gave you people $600. Well, what did I not buy? Right. You bought the Fast Pass. Oh, well, why would you sell me the fast pass without selling me the tickets right. to the park? So then I had to pay another astronomical amount of money just to walk in. Mm-hmm. Maybe that was my fault because I didn't look into it deep enough. But if I'm giving you $600 or whatever the amount, hundreds of dollars was, yeah. I would assume that includes entry into the park. Why would you sell me a fast pass and not sell me entry into the park? Does it make any sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But okay, fine. Maybe that was on me. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't do enough research. Fine. I walk into the park. I decide I'm going to try and go on a ride. Mm-hmm. I can't go on the ride. That ride does not like people my size. Mm. So now, again, that's probably my fault, right? I'm the one who ate all the hamburgers. I get it. <laughs> right. I, I, I think it's your fault. Yeah, yeah. I think you're 100% at yeah, fault. Yeah, it's probably <laughs> my fault. Okay? I, I get it. But every single ride that they have, I go in the test seat. They're like, no. Nah. I'm like, what are you doing? How could it be? I can fit on every ride in Disney. All the thrill rides. They have roller coasters that go upside down in Disney. I go right on them. Not a problem. They don't. I go to Universal. No. Not, not I think for that, you. I, look, I'm not trying to stick. I'm trying to rationalize. It's safety. It's safety. It's safety. And I think also they have more intense rides they there. Do. So they do. They, it's, you know. Yeah. You know, if you're going on, you know, like uh, so, the one in Animal Kingdom, the uh, the, uh, the Everest, Everest, yeah. yeah, that one, you know, that one's pretty straightforward. Yeah. You just have a, maybe a lap on. Yeah, there's not like much, yeah, but so you can get away with that. But you know, something like, you know, uh, so Hulk, you need a, you, you need, need a, yeah, yeah, you, you need, need the a, big thing. Mm-hmm. But now they're open to Mario Land. Oh yeah, and I'm all about Mario Land. I'm like, there's probably going to be, and I think there is, uh, a Mario Kart ride. Is yeah, what the ride mm-hmm. looks like. They said, and I don't know how accurate it is because not everything on the internet is true, but this seemed like it was pretty legit, that if you have over a 38-inch waist on your size, on your pants, you cannot ride Mario. How is that? I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't that's know. That's ridiculous. That could, be, that, could be, that could be, you know, maybe they had, I don't know. That's maybe ridiculous. 38-inch waist. I mean, that's not a big waist. That's an adult. An, mm-hmm. That means an adult cannot go on the ride. Yeah, maybe it's just like a pro. I don't know if that's an official know. pressing. I don't but know. This but, is what, but this is what they do in, in Universal. It's not enjoyable to everybody. Now, no, listen. Not, that's not discrimination it, or anything. No, that's I'm not saying safety, it is. Man. I'm not saying it is. But I am saying they could make the seats bigger if they wanted. They could. They just choose not to. Because they do have some modified seats. So you know the, the seats can be made right. bigger. They just don't put them on there. Um, for me, I'm like, I'm spending all this money. You'll take my money. But then I can't do anything. So I'm never going back. Mm-hmm. I love Universal. I did Fast Pass with my brother. Um, uh, we also did the uh, behind the scenes tours. The behind the scenes tours was in, amazing. In uh, California was great. It was amazing. Yeah. I, we did like the seven a.m. tour. Yeah. And you know we went to the you know the 
you know, the Hill Valley Courtyard yeah. the, the, with the, the clock tower. They have a different facade on it. But, dude, we had, they had, like, a lunch break, man. It was the best lunch I ever had. It was so good. But with that, with that tour, it came with automatically with Fast Pass. And we, okay. But I think that, like, going back to Disney's Fast Pass, it's like everything's like an additional price. This, Everything is. And I got to say, with Universal, I think I like that it's like a one flat price. And, they, and that's the way they ration Fast Pass by yeah. making it super expensive. Yeah. But it works out that way. And I think I it's mean, worth it. Universal's but, Fast Pass is the best Fast Pass. You're just never waiting online. You just yeah. walk right on yeah. any ride. And then it's if great. you do wait on a ride, it's usually really not that bad. Yeah, it's not terrible. It's not, you know. Their Fast Pass system works. But they're even just the regular standby yeah. lines are not as bad. No, but, and it, their standby lines aren't as bad because their Fast Pass works better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, yeah, no. Universal has that part down to a science. You can just walk right on to almost any ride with their Fast mm -hmm. Pass. And then if you do want to wait, it's not it's not terrible. A 30 40 minute wait's not bad at those parks. Oh, and no usually way. you can get on 90% of their rides real quick. I will say they have that down. I just don't go there cuz I don't fit on any of the rides anymore because uh that's just how they how they've made it. And it wasn't always like that, but the more rides they add, they don't want, you know, that they they have a whole Harry Potter land and they have a ride about Hagrid, but Hagrid can't ride his own ride. That's all yeah. I'm saying. <laughs> all I'm saying. Hagrid can't ride his own ride. It would just make any sense. Got to cut down the butterbeer, bro. Oh, <laughs> that butterbeer is good. That butterbeer goes right down. Um, I, I'm just saying I probably but, will not go back to uh, Universal anytime in the near the near future. Disney, I, on the other hand, I go, I do everything I want. And I don't feel stressed when I'm there, but I, it's because I go so often. I go, uh, into the sh I go into every store they got, I, I'm in it. I think... Like I don't I said, rush I, anywhere. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I like my my family. When I used to go, well, my you know my my brother, my sister, my dad, my parents. We were like trained. We were like trained like soldiers. You know, we were like we even hold hands. We just we just walked <laughs> the in ride, there, man. Yeah, yeah I remember. The my, park. Yeah, my dad pushed Goofy out of the way. Like <laughs> we were just going through, man. You know, like we got in all those rides. But yeah. I mean, I just find the whole experience there just kind of stressful See, nowadays. Yeah, I, I, I think I Disney. My Disney trips are uh, a lot. They're very laid back now. Because I've, I I don't rush around. The only thing that that bugs me a little bit, the, or, or the bugs me the most, I guess, I don't know now what I want to eat for dinner when I'm there. But you have to make a reservation for dinner, or you're not getting into a restaurant. And well, that's to, the other thing. That's what I'm saying. That, like, like, that's and like, that's like, a product of there being so many people there. Yeah, well, that's the other thing. Yeah. Like, I think their limit, I think their capacity is about yeah. like 90,000. They need and to I open on, another park. On, on average, this is just for Magic Kingdom. I don't know the other yeah. capacity. But for Magic Kingdom, that's the most you know popular yeah. park. I think their capacity is 90,000. They don't have 90,000 every day. They have about maybe 60. Yeah, there's a nothing. lot of people. Yeah. I don't know, but I think you could ration that. I know they have the reservation yeah, system. The, I mean, I understand but, the need for a reservation. It's just that if I'm... If I'm booking my trip and I'm going to Disney six months from whatever it is, I don't. I'm not hungry yet. I don't. I'm, I don't know what I want to eat when exactly. I'm there. Exactly. That's and what I'm picking a restaurant like, that I'm not ready. On your to eat vacation, at. bro, I want to be yeah, that, free. I already have my whole. I already have every day of my life right now. I can while see. While marking, you yeah. know, scheduled my weekends, what I gotta do here when I'm on vacation. I don't want to just be like, you know, hey, let, let, let's go on. Let's go on. It's a small world, and then maybe go on. You know, Mister Toad's Wild Ride. I can't mm -hmm. do that anymore. Now I have to be like, you know, get you know. Get the map out. They don't even have a map. I don't even give out paper maps anymore. Who needs a map? I do. I don't I need a map. I my phone. I, I, I don't know. even use a map. I just go. Well, well you go there too often, which Even is if fine. I didn't know where I was but going. still, that's not... I just float around. That's not, that's not, no. a, that's not a good See, experience. That's not, uh, a, yeah. that's not a well... Walt is not happy. I'm, I'm not happy with that. I, 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 the best that. time to go was during the pandemic when nobody else was going because then there was no lines at all. Right. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I don't have... It is stressful because there's so much to do and there's a lot of people and there's a lot of preparation. But once I'm in the park, I, I just kind of like do my own thing. Mm -hmm. I float... I'll leave the park in the middle of the day, go back to the hotel, take a shower, right? do whatever I want. I'll, I'll lounge around, I go know, back like, to the like hotel. I said, for people, night. Yeah. You know, even for myself, yeah. like I guess I've, I've been there, you know, countless times, but I find it just stressful. I, I've been to, uh, to Disney World in Florida. I've been to mm -hmm. Disneyland in California. I went to Disneyland Paris. I haven't made it my way over to the, uh, the parks in China and Japan just yet. Uh, it's on the list of things to do, but, um, California is much more laid back than it was in Florida. Paris was much more laid back than it is in Florida, where you don't have to plan everything or be so like held to an agenda. Right. Um, as the one, and I think it's just because of how busy it is in Disney World in, in Orlando. There's just so much going on. 
But I don't feel str- I, I I just go with the flow while I'm there. I'm like, oh, this Peter Pan has too long of a line. I'll just go do something else over here, and I just float around. I don't I don't get stressed out there as much anymore. Wow. And now if I feel in the middle of the day I'm too tired, I'll go back to the hotel. I'll take a nap, take a shower, go to a different park at night, watch some fireworks. Mm-hmm. It's great. I don't feel... You, you're Disney do, and all do, wrong. Do you know why they have fireworks? Do you know why theme parks have fireworks? No, I'm being serious. Do you know why theme parks I, have fireworks? No. <laughs> to tell everyone to go home? Is that, that's got to be, right? No, because um, um, it started because people want... Um, they want you to stay in the park as long as possible. They say, oh, it's going to be fireworks. Fireworks are at night. So it keeps people... Is that, is that what the reason side. is? Yeah, I thought it was happened. like, show some fireworks to these people until they get the hell out of the park. Oh, right, 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 yeah, yeah. But um, there's actually the main thing is to keep people, the real really? people in to stay in. I didn't know to that. Wait till the very last minute. Oh, the fireworks shows at 945. Yeah, you got to stay in before we, this way you're more likely to go on rides yeah. by, you know, chips we, and dip. Um, we went for Christmas to the parks, and they do the Christmas fireworks. And uh, we we paid for the the Christmas party that they mm-hmm. do. And they give you a, a, we did two of these Christmas parties. One in Magic Kingdom, one in Hollywood Studios. They give you a whole section to yourself. The best place to watch the fireworks from where there's, mm-hmm. you know, you have chairs, you have... Oh, I did that. They give you the snacks, yeah, like, yeah, all yeah, that. Yeah. Is the best way to enjoy the fireworks at Disney. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is like a mad, like a madhouse when it's fireworks time, as if people have never seen a fireworks show before. Mm-hmm. There's just like a billion people all fighting each other to see who's going to stand in the right spot. And mm-hmm. it's a, But this was... I don't watch the fireworks or the parades in Disney. Mm-hmm. It, to me, that is... Utter right. chaos. Yeah, That's where the yeah, stress yeah. comes from. Trying to watch one of those uh, those firework shows. And they tape up the streets. So oh, it's the, oh yeah. my god! That I can't. I can't do it. Mm-hmm. That's what drives me nuts. But then when I did it this way through their their fireworks party, their Christmas party, that was great. You were off mm-hmm. to the side. It wasn't loud. Yeah. Get get yourself an alcoholic beverage while you're watching the uh, the fireworks. Very relaxing. That was good. Mm-hmm. I'll never forget. This is well, not really stress. It didn't stress me out, but I just remember I went with my with my family, with my parents, with my brother, and my sister. So there used to be a ride. Where I get it's a, it's a ride. It, it used to be called Alien and Encounter. Yes. And um, this is when Disney actually had some balls. You know, and had like adult rides. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, but that ride for those who who never been on it, you might be able to find some YouTube on it. So basically, um, you went into this. Um, like circle theater in the middle of it was like this like a chamber theater. yeah chamber yeah. right so and the storyline was that um they would transport prisoners and these prisoners were like you know um aliens you yeah know? so when you were there as like a you know as a passenger on this flight you know so while you're in in the middle of it you see all the different um they would show the different you know uh, prisoners that they're going to be moving over and anyway the one that pops inside the central tube or chamber basically looked like predator you know mm-hmm. and um it was such a great ride. It was, you know, you know, this thing actually came over. And it was, like, legit scary, too. Yeah, like, and they yeah. put this thing over, like, your, uh, like, went over your head, like a, like a body chest. And, like, when the thing would, like, oh, anyway, the thing would, like, break out. It'd be yeah. black. The thing would be, like, breathing on you, like, <gasps> you know what I mean? Like, it was amazing. However, the scary part for me was actually was getting on the ride because there was this guy and his family. He must, he was super tall. I'll never forget this. My brother definitely know, will remember this. This guy had a crab stain on the back of his oh, God. face. <laughs> and like, dude, all I remember was like, my whole family were like, yo, we are not going to sit next to this guy. You know what I mean? Or, dude, it was disgusting, man. So every time I think of Alien Encounter, I think of how that ride was amazing. And that guy was walking around with a giant crap stain on his, I don't know who wears sweatpants anyway in Florida. It's 100 It's 100 degrees. degrees. Yeah, you know, with the humidity. But I'll never forget that. I'll never and then forget they that. changed it into Stitch. Mm-hmm. It's, they got rid of that ride. They, Stitch is gone too yeah. now. I didn't realize that was gone. When we, my, uh, it was terrible. I did it once. I'll never do it again. Anyway. I remember one time they actually shut the ride down because me, my brother, and my friends, we went to um, uh, what was it? I think it was Cal. Was it California? Or I don't know. We wanted the Tower of Terror before. Okay. I mean, the one in you in Florida yeah, yeah. is still that, but um, amazing ride. Um, so those who want don't know what it is. Basically, you go on an elevator that shoots up and down. Um, it's pitch black. But um, anyway, when they like any ride, they take your picture during it. So the Twilight Zone is, is a scary ride. So um, we wanted to do something funny. So like sometimes you make funny faces. So we thought the idea of like, oh, let's put her heads inside of the our shirts. It look like we're, <laughs> we're, we're, we're headless. <laughs> so we did that. Dude, they they shut the whole ride down and they like they put like the white lights on. Like 
you cannot cover your head or anything like that. So we felt so embarrassed. Wow. You know, and like, and then like, as soon as they, we, you know, we obviously, yeah. you know, we were just trying to be, you know, silly, but all, somewhere someone has a, you know, some kind of footage of us headless, you know, but yeah. Here's a fun Disney ride story for you. I am prone to kidney stones. Oh, man. So right before our trip, this was years ago, we're going to go to Disney, right? Maybe a week, not even a full mm-hmm. week, four or five days before, yeah. kidney stone attack. Oh, my God. Doubled over in pain, can't get off the floor. It's bad, right? Right. Go to the hospital. They're like, well, keep drinking water, flush it out, whatever. They give me pain pills uh, to try and help with the pain, and I'm on my way. So that's what you do. Mm-hmm. That's the that's the standard operating procedure for having a kidney stone. Drink a lot right. of water, pee it out, take right, pain right, pills right. so you're not screaming. Right, right. So now we have to go. We have to mm-hmm. leave. I haven't passed it yet. Mm-hmm. So now I'm going to Disney. I'm hopped up on painkillers. Right, right, right. I'm drinking tons of water trying to pee. I'm on an airplane drinking water trying to pee like every two seconds, right? Mm-hmm. Trying to... So now I'm like, this is going to be the worst Disney experience. The worst any vacation yeah, of my life, of right? of course. Because how can you be in this much pain and enjoy your vacation? No way. And I'm trying my best, right? Like, and you're going to one of the most stressful places in the world. It's very... Yeah. <laughs> and this, I'm like, this is really going to be a disaster. And I'm in pain, and I'm trying to make the best of it, because, you know, what are you going to do, right? We're in Hollywood Studios, and I'm feeling miserable. We go on um, Rock and Roller Coaster, mm. and I'm like, all right, I'm on I'm online. It's like a 55-minute long wait. I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. I can barely stand up because the pain is starting to get really bad. I don't have a drink with me because I'm online, so I can't even pop a pain pill right now until I, like, right. finish the ride. I'm like, do I get off the line, like take one of these exits and get to a drink? I've already waited 40 minutes. I can see the, the end of the line. I'm like, I'm just going to tough it out. So tough it out. I get on the ride. Um, you've been on the, on the roller coaster, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, Thing shoots off like zero to 60 and like yeah, yeah. A, whatever Good, it is, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Super fast. It's knocking me all around. Everything hurts. I'm trying to enjoy it. The ride comes to an end, right? Uh, Aerosmith gave us our backstage passes. That- we, we get off the ride. And I'm just like, I got to I gotta get to a bathroom. I, I, something's wrong. Like, mm. this is bad. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to make it out of this park. Oh they might be God. carting me out. So there's, we run to, like, the nearest bathroom uh, in the park. I'm in pain. I'm sweating. And I'm like, it's not the, it's hot in, yeah. in Florida sweats. It's the, I'm in a stupid amount of pain yeah, like, sweats. Yeah, like, you don't feel well. Pain. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. The sweats when you don't feel well. Yeah. yeah. It's one of those, like, you, you're sweating and you're shivering and it's a thousand degrees and everything's wrong. I go to the, to the bathroom and in the middle of Disney... And every single person that was in that bathroom is traumatized because all they heard was a gut-wrenching scream. Um, the kid, the the ride was like so like yeah, jolting, violent. Yeah, yeah. violent that it it loosened up the kidney stone. I wound up passing it wow. right after getting off the ride, um, and I was able to enjoy the rest of the trip. But the 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 poor kids in that bathroom when they heard the blood curdling scream that must have happened Jeez. while I was in Disney. Um, but now whenever I have a kidney stone, I look for a roller coaster because it'll knock it out. But yeah, that's that's how magical Disney is. It will cure kidney stones. Tell me, there's no magic in Disney. It is the cure for kidney stone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. magic. Yeah. Boom, magic. Uh, PJ, God bless you, man. I don't, I don't know. That's. Because you're talking about pain. Um, when I went to Vegas, um, what my brother, um, you know, the first, I think anyone's, the first night of you, you're on vacation, you always should make the first night of your trip the most relaxing. I know? agree. Just 100%. Get dinner. 100%. All those kind of things. So we went Nothing to, crazy on, yeah, on day so one. The first, and we, we, uh, it was a bunch of us, so we all of us came in different flights. So our, my brother and I, our first night, we went to see... Um, like Legends and Concerts, so it was okay. like Britney Spears, you know, impersonators. Right, right. Um, Charlie Daniels, Rod Stewart. So I was in the stratosphere. So we're waiting online, and don't you know, to get into the you know the show. And all of a sudden, this guy behind us goes like, "Hey, man, you like you're bold, you know? I clearly I'm you know, I'm bold. So <laughs> for those if you see us on the video, but anyway, so I and stuff like that doesn't really bother me, you know. And then, you know, you get used to that kind of joke. So I turn around, he's also bald, so it's like. Ah! So he's just like, uh, oh, I'm just joking around. So I'm like, oh, it's all, it's all good. And then he goes, um, he's like, well, I wasn't always bald. I'm like, well, yeah, well, same here, man. He's like, no, when I was 22 years old, um, I had an accident. I, wake, I didn't wake up till like six months later. I'm like, oh, my God, it's, you know, I'm very sorry. He's like, yeah, I, I was doing, um, 
like a bench press, and he said he popped a blood vessel on his head. And he goes, yeah, because I had this, you know, I had to get brain surgery. And he turns, he has like this crazy looking scar on the side of his head. I'm like, oh my, you know, you know. And look, I didn't, this guy just Like Darth Vader and Return of the Jedi when yeah. they take the helmet off yeah. and there's the big gash? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, and I'm like, oh wow, you know, and he goes, yeah, when once I, you know, I recover, I don't know how to walk and talk again. You would never think this guy spoke right. beautifully. Um, he goes, but yeah, then like, you know, a couple of years later, when I was hanging out with my friends, and we had a we had a pain contest. This is this is exactly this guy. This is like verbatim. I'm basically saying this is exactly what he said. He's like, we had a pain contest, and I'm looking at my brother. I'm like, oh my god, only in Vegas, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> so he goes, we had a contest. Um, who can hold their hand the longest on a barbecue? So I'm like, I'm like, man, is this, maybe, this, maybe this is a joke. Maybe this is right. going to be a punchline or something like. And he goes. Well, let me tell you something. I won. He turns his hand over, dude. He had like a barbecue grill. Oh my god! It looked like a hamburger. His hand, and then it was like a, then it was like he just vanished. He goes, "All right, guys, enjoy the show." He's like, "I gotta see my family." And then he just vanished. He just went away. But what makes someone even say any of this to a stranger? I don't know. Maybe it's like the bald yeah. thing. I know bald people that there's a connection to it, like that you feel like you're like the part of the same fan club. Yeah, I get that. But people with beards often comment on my beard, like "Nice beard, bro." I'm like, "I know, thanks." Mm-hmm. I get it. It's the same kind of thing. But I think this, you know, that's the best part about trips is that you see all these, um, you know, different characters. See, that's my least favorite part about trips is having to interact with strangers. Mm-hmm. I you know, just, yeah, like yeah, I said that's why yeah. I want to be left alone. Yeah, like, clearly, left sometimes alone. I'm a yeah. magnet for these freaks. But <laughs> yeah, I just, I just like you go somewhere. I'm like, I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't know today. I, I barely want to talk to the waitress when I'm getting dinner. Like, I certainly don't want to talk to some random stranger on like a boardwalk somewhere. Uh, I don't, I don't know. To me, that's. Don't talk to me. I'm on vacation. If you don't know me, mm-hmm. you don't have any reason to talk to me. Yeah, you know, I don't care if someone's yeah. friendly. I'm just saying, you have stuff like that. But some of these, obviously, these people might you know, have, to have issues, and which, which is but Everybody always wants to talk but, to me also, and I hate it. I must look friendly. I don't know. I don't want yeah. anyone to talk to me. Yeah. Everyone always wants to be my friend. I mean, my brother, we look, we basically, my, we, we're not twins, but we, we look like yeah. twins. We can pass for that. So I think that also makes people, if there's a, uh, something comfortable about it. I guess. Like approaching. It's like, oh my God, you guys twins? Who's old? You know? And then when we tell people, say, like, oh, who's younger or older, we have to, you know, we, we let them play a little game, you know, to get our own jobs right. off, you know. So, <laughs> um, and everything. But um, I think we're kind of running out of time, I believe. Are we? I didn't, uh, I wasn't checking the clock. That's my fault. I yeah, I think to... we're running out of time on our lunch period. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, to all our listeners, thanks for, you know, checking in. Um, we're going to do this uh, weekly. Uh, that's the schedule we had planned so far. Like I said, you can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, um, and our website at coolkidslunchtable.podbean.com. Um, and the the Instagram is Cool Kids Lunch Table. Easy to find on Instagram. So yeah, guys, we have a lot of things coming up: uh, interviews, special guests, and all different toxic uh, topics. And uh, you know, we really appreciate you guys listening. And um, and we'll see you next week. Same time, same table. Have a week.